precious plastic. Yes. Something. Tell me that recording. Okay, got it. Yes, I'm, I'm recording the call as just, as all okay. other community calls, and sorry for the internet problems. No, it's okay. It's uh, just a pop up big window <laughs> in the call. Yes, as every machine in the world, uh, no machine is perfect so every time it's need to see exactly what you need and then you can make a type of modification or adaptation to the design of the machine we make several times the precious plastic machines and uh, we can recommend some uh, sometimes it's about now about more than seven machines there's basic machines and pro machines of course I highly recommend to go and invest with the pro machines because they solve the issues with the basic versions. Start with the plastic pro, shredder pro machine version three, and it may need some modification, especially related to the smart part, the electronics, because there is uh, notice some issues related to the stability of Arduino with the machine. I don't want to go deeply with the technical part, but I think I can help with that, especially the mechanical part. You can make it somehow more affordable and start with the shredding because after that, any type of recycling, depending on what type of plastic you uh, suffer from locally. Here in Iraq, we have a big issue of PET plastic, uh, which is, uh, some sort of or type of plastic it's somehow hard even in shredding the process after that there is many uh, scenarios of recycling the type of plastic you want to solve its issue locally and we can't talk about that but in general precious plastic machine provide you with a decentralized solution for a plastic issue provide you with uh, ability to support your community with a solution in very fast way. Also, it is so good, uh, even with big amount of a plastic, if you make it a scalable project, which provide you with an advantage of even some machine are stops for any reason, the project will uh, keep running rather than buying a big machines or a big production line for plastic recycling. Thank you. Okay, Th thanks, Nares. Um, so if I sum up, you really recommend to start with the shredder machine. And I think from the theory of what we've seen on Precious Plastic webpage, that was we was thinking because it seemed easier for us but it's really nice and helpful to have this uh, confirmation from somebody who built it themselves. Um, what about you, Antonio, from your experience? Yeah, thank you, Nares and Jowo. Um, so I think most important learnings I have with precious plastic for over these years is that we should look on it not as an uh, medium production uh, project because the more you process plastic, the more issues you have with the uh, pollution, the particle pollution. And we should look on it as uh, a very small uh, processing units. Like, you know, like instead of looking or placing a bigger space, you should be more into making a smaller spaces in and build a community on those the smaller spaces uh like that that's the most important one i think um the second one will be like it is entirely a community project like if you drive this with a community either students you have a, a, a <clears throat> sorry a good base because especially first year students in the universities are very enthusiastic. They are looking for something to, at least here in the context and as, as far as I've seen, uh, they're looking for something to to uh, practice. And also uh, it is a good starting into learning about uh, how to design a production. Just an event that's small, it is easy to, to learn from that. 
And so I was very uh, fortunate. Uh, two years ago, I was also like no essays in Iraq. I, I was in North Iraq and I uh, built this uh, proposal for the GIZ there. I will share it here um, in the chat. And maybe if it's possible to share my display, also I can share a little bit of the diagrams and I, I did. Yes, I think it okay. should be possible. Okay. So here. So this is a, a project I, I, I don't know, you can see my display now? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. So th this is in in uh, Duhok, in the Kurdistan region of, of Iraq. And uh, yeah, like definitely. So there is a, a big issue with the PAT because of the way water is served there. Um, it's serving the small recipients. And every every time you go to a place, you receive first thing is a, a cup of water. And then this thing is disposed immediately, but uh, there is no recycling or plastic collection system there. So at the end, you end up with just plastic in all over the highways, the streets, and on the rivers, most importantly. And so uh, that was my point on the proposal for the project was to offer a solution to relieve a bit of this uh, issue and involve the community on the process of developing a solution. And this is like uh, also something that I learned is very important is to answer the question of oh, how much plastic could you process and, and how much time, how, how long it will take to process. And so I, I made this uh, like a circuit of the different parts of the process and the amount of time that I was considering for it. And so I made an estimate like for 25 kgs of PET, specifically PET, I could process it from Monday to a Thursday. And the reason why PET is a, uh, also an opportunity is that PET mostly is used for water. So you don't have the issue of having different chemicals there. So it's easy to share, to, to shred and also to wash, you know that you won't have that many side residues there. But that's just specifically because in, in, in the Duhok, you could see these piles of the same plastic. So it is easy also to, to collect and classify because you know that's PET, it still have the branding, you know, it's, it's water. So that's a, another learning is that to take care of, you know, of the, liquids that were held in these containers because sometimes those are like uh, pesticides and other things that are a little dangerous to handle. And so, yeah, that, those things are you need to take care. Um, there are other projects that intersect with the uh, precious plastic, like they have this one called Recyclers. Uh, I don't remember where are they right now. Oh, yeah, Lagos, Nigeria, yeah. Uh, so definitely look at it as a way to also, um, like if in places where you don't have a collection system, there is people working uh, in collecting this and getting money back uh, as a way to dignify their activity. That's a, a good project, like um, so something to look at also the intersection with different projects. And... It's a very uh, trial and error process. Like you will have to go through this thing of testing a lot, making different formulas. Like something that you need to understand also that helps a lot is that not all plastics uh, have the same properties once they are remelt, you know? So they are thermoform and thermoset. So there are plastic that once they are melted the first time, the second time they don't keep their physical um, capabilities. So there, then you will have to make different mixes, but these mixes need to be 
depending also in the melting point of the material. So you have the same melting point for that. And um, yeah, I think the most critical machine in 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 the precious plastic machines is the shredder. Like the shredder is is something that will determine like your productivity a lot because it's the one that can process the plastics in volume and it's the first step for the the before the the fusion and like the extraction or, or other things so you need to take care of that machine also to have a proper motor um you need to build this. So uh, I, I know I tried aluminum before for building this machine. It won't work because aluminum is too soft to handle the the torque and the forces. So you will have to use steel. And so for for me, there in, in Duhok, it wasn't possible to find um, all the materials there and uh, a way to machine this following the blueprint. So my way to resource it was to reaching out to one of the precious plastic providers in Turkey. So I reached out to them and they sent me the prices and the time of building and delivering. So that's also something like if you find that the materials and the machining is more expensive than buying from somewhere else, even with the delivery, that's also an option to consider. And yeah, so th those are like the biggest things like I learned from precious plastic running in Iraq and here in Mexico uh, community and to learn the scale of the process. The most effective one is to keep it small um, and not look at it as a semi-industrial medium um, like size uh, production Thing because it, it is too risky like you need to comply with regulations and the more plastic the more issue you know um so yeah that, that's i'll have if there are any comments or questions yes thank you thank you antonio um that's that's great because you went through the building process and also even the the operation basically and that's valuable information that's where we are totally in the dark for like a lab uh, make a space where we are just starting and i also like the make or buy answer um, so we know that you can build up a community with students to uh, build it together because they want to to have some practical uh, stuff to do um, however, if we don't have all the materials, and that's that would be a follow-up question, I think, in our project, we are we are starting to source the the materials. Uh, if we don't have it, we still have like official vendors where we can buy it, uh, with a decent price from what we've seen. Um, one question I will have would be, how um, how many machines do you use because we can see that precious plastic have four machines on those small ones, the shredders and the extruder, the press. And for what I've seen, it seems like you just use the shredder first and then the extruder. Is it correct? Yeah, for me, that's correct. Um, because those are the, the easiest, uh, once you build these machines, those are the easiest to operate. The shredder and the the uh in, in shredder or the in, injector. Injector, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the extruder will help you also if you are 3D printing stuff, like in our in our case here in, in this uh, community. Um so right now what I'm doing is um I changing from 3D printing recycling plastic to injection molding. Because also in, in the long term, I think it's uh, easier to inject plastic. The, the production time is lesser. The objects you can make are like, what, one of the big issues when you are setting the community is like to show like how things happen and to 
also convince people that is uh, an easy process, an easy process. Like if you come with a 3D printer, they will think like it's just too, too much complexities around that you need to learn the 3D printer to have a final object. Mm -hmm. And with the injector, it is easier to, to inject the plastic in the mold, but also it is difficult to build the mold. So you have to trade what things, but I, I find that it is easier to have the, the injection molds at the end. Like you, you can just thread, melt and inject, and then you have a comp or something to show to people. Like that's something very cool actually. Yeah. Uh, so no, in the no, case right. of the injector, you, you bought the machine for the injector, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you um for the let, let me share again um for the injector uh this is a machine that a, a friend of mine builds in in his project um so i think that the most expensive parts or the difficult parts of resource are the pid um controller and the the these uh, resistors that melt and the like uh, heat the the pipe and and melt the plastic those are the two things that you need to resource from uh like online or something and it is difficult to to find that in some places um but definitely it's not as as expensive as it looks like like this uh, PID control unit will be around uh, $50 here in Mexico with the, the with the resistors. So it, it, is, okay. it looks like a little um, frightening, like it looks like expensive, but it's, it's not really that expensive. It's like $50, just the components. And then you need to just build the structure. It's very easy. You can find, uh, um, like in any way, anywhere, to do this. I'm sure. So, those are like yes. Two, yeah. Uh, um, this... Yeah, for the shredder, uh, the difficult part to resource is the motor because you need a motor with the, uh reductor like like something to increase the torque and yeah so that but that those are critical components of the machines i i would like to let norris talk a little more because i feel like i'm taking too much of the conversation and i think norris has a lot of practical experience too or uh, i don't know if anyone else can can contribute to I just want to bring like one point on the shredder like I had because I just had a conversation with a Portuguese uh, fab lab that is also working a lot with fresh plastic machines and they just showed me this new design for the shredder that is meant to be safer so that people uh, and students and people that are using the shredder wouldn't uh, have their hands there at some point and it's kind of interesting because in Portugal this is kind of a necessity for maker spaces and spaces in general uh, to have like a minimum standard um, for safety which is another also uh, topic I think uh, sub at some point this might be interesting as well to discuss like uh, how safe are these machines and um, I mean I'm happy to share also this design from from that space and maybe connect the space at some point but just wanted to say that uh, and last thing I, I didn't say this at the beginning but uh, Omar also is not here today because he's sick and he just apologized for not being able to make it so just wanted to say that as well. Thank you. Thanks. And I, I think that safety is definitely a question. Um, because my understanding is that the shredder has like um, some, some kind of knives inside. I've not seen yet how the disposition is. And we might need to operationally tell people in, in the community, OK, don't put your hand in there when it's running. But if it can be automatized, that would be even better. And um, the second um, point is the, the other machines, they all have these thermal elements or these heating elements. 
And I was also wondering how you guys manage the safety around that. Um, what kind of temperature? So technically, to begin with, uh, can you control the temperature? Maybe that's why you have the PIT controller. Um, and then how do you control the people around so that they don't get burned? And in the process, I guess you had some learning there. Maybe stuff happened. Um, do you want to share, Norris? Yes, uh, actually, for the safety part, of course, you, you can make many modification like with our shredder, we try to make the neck of the hopper where the part you can put is longer than any human hand to reach or by make a type of right angle window. So it's not open from the top. We close from and you can make an uh, open from the front. In this way, you can become very hard to somebody to misuse the machine. In this way, you can make a safety and also for the heat element of the extruder machine, you can add uh, a piece of metal or aluminum or any type of guardian rather than a plastic, of course, because plastic may melt. And also you can use a type of a guardian in metal like steel or aluminum. And even you can use a, a type of uh, I don't know what's the name in English exactly, a type of uh, fibers, glass fibers that can resist heat and to keep also the, uh, the extruder um, uh, more stable in heat temperature because it will cover everything. So it's become not affected by the environment and also put this type of uh, guardian. This will help you to make it a very safe machine to touch safely. Your mic, we can't hear you. Sorry, I was saying thank you very much. I I wanted to ask another question, but I don't know if somebody else want to ask questions because I have ton of them. But um, okay, I, I will continue. Um, I was wondering what is the difference between the extruder and the injector, because from just seeing the three D models, it just seems like one is horizontal and the other one is vertical. But maybe in the usage, uh, you've noticed something uh, more specific. Yes, it's uh, the extruder is more continuous production. So you can use it with a bigger molds. You can make molds or make uh, what in the way the British Plastic website use the steel extrusion to make parts for stools or chairs or garden chairs. In this way, you need to uh, use extruder because it will provide you with a sustainable uh, continuous uh, production of a plastic, the melted plastic. While the injector is suitable for use with the, let's say a first size product, you can make small uh, uh, molds and you can just need to inject once. And it's also uh, suitable to use it for rising awareness like when you want to take some machines to the schools for any type of activity, the injector will be fine. While the extruder is uh, more suitable for production line for more sustainable reasons. Okay, okay, very clear, thanks. And so- and for, for molds, I think you need to think about molds, like make your logo, your designs, or anything with small size, like a giveaway, as a proof of uh, the ability to plastic recycling locally. I think you need to uh, have ability to make some uh, bla uh, plastic molds from aluminum. So I don't, you, uh, did you are the guy who will deal with the technical part or you have more team members will work on this part because making molds is somehow tricky. We try to solve this issue by using a, a type of software. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Antonio. Exactly. We, we deal with some issues related to machining the molds, but we solve it with a type of software uh, we, buy, uh, we bought 
told you wizard to control the feed and speed of CNC machine to make your uh, machine can uh, make a, a mold from first time. So if if you or any of your team need more uh, technical information about that, we can keep the conversation open for that reason. For sure, Paul, for sure. I think we'll come back to you, be sure of that. Um, so you have a CNC machine in your makerspace and you do it yourself. Uh, exactly. we, we don't have one yet. <laughs> we are we are starting small, really smallly to um, build up the capacity again uh, on the construction play, uh, part of the lab. So we might need to buy it to begin with. or And that's one question, in which material should the mold be? Because I, I guess we cannot 3D print it, for example. It will melt, I, I will assume. Or is it possible? Absolutely. Plastic mold, mainly made by metals. We yeah. use aluminum, but we have some research on some type of uh, uh, Teflon plastic, a type of plastic locally called Teflon, but I'm not sure they use the scientific right name because it's maybe not real Teflon, but it's a type of plastic can resist heat for the molded plastic. Also, there is a precious plastic in I think Sydney or another uh, city, they have interesting uh, sharing on Instagram. They use a part of the, uh, the mold is with acrylic, so it's clear. So you can see and show the student how the plastic flow in the mold. So I yes. think about uh, 200 to 400 degrees is the degree, uh, the heat temperature for plastic uh, recycling and molding which make a wide range of material can be uh, suitable. Uh, okay. Also, even you can use a type of uh, dense wood with some treatment like oils or something can be maybe affordable, easy to make, and also can resist for a long time to provide not every detailed uh, types of molds, but can produce many, many things if you want to make like a ring for chains or anything. You can even make it from a very dense dark wood with some wax or oils can be also good idea to start with. Nice, nice. I, I can give you more details on that because I'm right now building some uh, molds. Um, so like Nora say, the CNC machines are, uh, like the the G code is very important because you need to have a proper surfing surfacing speed, the punching speed of the of the spindle. Uh, I don't know if you have any experience with CNC, but um, so uh, critical parts of the CNC is like you need to have a very sturdy machine. It needs to have linear rails build bearings and something that helps you to reduce vibrations uh, at the time of machining the, the the mold the material that i'm using is aluminum 6061 it's not the softest but this is uh, the like easy available and i'm using these little blocks like this to make small molds yeah. So they will this will make like a two part mold and um the other thing is that you will need a spindle motor that at least uh, one kilowatt to process properly the the aluminum. If you try to do this with a five hundred watt, three hundred watt, it will take you forever, and the precision will be very, very very less. Uh, yeah, so you have at least one kilowatt, 1 1.5 kilowatt spindle. Uh, and, and so there are different types of this, these spindles. There are some that are air cool or water cool. The best are the water cool. Uh, they're very silent, very efficient. And the other critical part are these things, the end mills you need to, to get proper ones. Like you see here, these little things. Like you need to have like super, um, 
like a good inventory of these things because you are going to break a few, especially at the time of learning. Uh, so you be sure that you have a quite, quite some. And so there are different types depending on the process you are running. Uh, so basically the CNC machine, you will divide it in, in, in two or three parts. The first one will be the rough cut where you prepare the material and then you remove most of the material and the, do you need that much detail? So you just need to be removing the big parts of the holes and all that. The second will be like a, a detailed um, uh, cut where you use a smaller one and a, a smaller bit and you will run on more details around the, the, the piece and the design. And at the end, you can have a very detailed one when you use a triangular engraving mill and then you make the small details. So like Nora says, it's very tricky because you need to divide this process properly. And if the more time you spend in the machining, the more prone to issues you will, you will be like, the more uh, bits you will break, then the more vibrations, will shake the piece and also very important, you need to fix it properly because the more power, the more chances you have to this flying away to your face. So you need to be very careful on that. And uh, so you need to fix this very, very well into the, into the bed and the CNC machine needs to always find the, the same place in the, in the, in the piece otherwise. If it, the piece is moving, shaking, all that, well, you, you will end up with something different in your design. And yeah, so it, it's been a, a quite a learning. And so like Norris uh, suggested, I think the best is to focus on very, very uh, simple designs first. Like a logo doesn't have many features or or a comb, like the, the, the best thing I, I, I've been doing is the most for the combs, like the smaller ones that are very easy and cool to, 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 to give away when you are presenting the project. I don't have any right now. Uh, I just recently sent the most and so, yeah. But yeah, definitely uh, the, the CNC machining is a very nice process, but you need to be conscious of the time that you would spend there. So so basically uh we need the, the shredder to cut the plastic then the the easy one is the injector to make uh, small stuff really easy but for that we need the mold and um I will have to think about the machining and how you how we get our mold. We will that that's a new a new uh, front we have to open now. Yes, I think Mustafa want to add something. Hey, yes, so I, I want to also speak about the modes. I think uh, in 2018 was the first time I heard of precious plastics. And I've been trying to see how far I can work also replicating some of these machines. But here in Ghana, sourcing the parts was very difficult. So. I moved to the north to meet one of my friends who is also into plastic recycling. He he recycled plastic into pavement blocks and bricks. So I took time to study how he made his molds. And what he does was that he basically has this sheet of metals. He cuts and then weld them together. And then he sand them around. So it, it makes it cost effective and much more easier to make as well. So for instance, you have uh, uh, these iron sheets here in Ghana, they are very easy to come by. So you get them and then you cut them into the desired shapes you want, you have, and then you weld them together. So we have the mold itself and then a lid, a lid of the mold. So, you know, there will be a place where you could you can inject the molten plastic through into the mold. And when you are done and it is cool enough, you can open the lid and then 
take your design out. So that was that till now, that is how he does it. And uh, I've been working with him for some time now. And secondly, you can check out uh, Macintosh Africa. Um, I'll, leave, I'll leave the link in the comment section. He He's also based in Ghana here. I don't know if you know about him. Uh, Not yet. He, yeah, he, he, I work with him very closely. I think uh, I, I, I just had some little incident. I was with him right now. He also does plastic recycling at, at very large, you know, and he also have very innovative uh, ways of processing plastics into school furniture and other useful things for the environment as well. So that's one way you can think about if you want to make the molds. You know, if you have someone who is good at welding and uh, you could you could just get these metal sheets, iron sheets, then cut them into the hexagonal shapes or square shapes or whatever shapes you want. If you are making tiles, you can you can do you can do that. If you are making bricks, you can do that also. Uh, and then that would be much more easier and cost effective effective as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. And um we are we are based in Togo, so we are neighbors. Um uh, if you happen to be in Accra, maybe in the next month, we can find a way to visit you guys. That, that would be yes. helpful. Yes, yes. So currently I'm in Accra. Uh, I'm in Accra. Actually, I've been working in, in, his, in at Macintosh Africa for a while now. Uh, so Togo and Accra is not, is not far. I think about eight hours or so. In a car, we could, we could, we could, yeah, yeah. So, okay. uh, so far as we are here on the call and link together, let's see how we communicate and also share much more info about how we also process tabs here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thanks. I was also noticing um, there is a lot of links in the chat. I think after the call, we lose them. Uh, maybe you can share them in the in the draft. Because Sandra shared the common, yeah, Fadi, I want to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say the same. It would be great if people can also like collectively take notes. I mean, we shared another link, which is the same link that is added in the WhatsApp Precious Plastic group. So please use that last link to add your presentations, comments, notes, uh, links, everything. Thank you. Thanks, Fadia. So we can have access to them after the call. Um, Sandra had a question in the chat. It was about a machine, a new machine from Precious Plastic to um, to do 3D filament. I think Mustafa, yes. I think one more other thing that uh, I wanted to add to when it comes to plastic recycling, uh, most often uh, we 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 try to process the plastics. I mean, like shred it, pass it through heat, and then use it to make something else different. But here at Macintosh Africa, you know, we could just take one plastic, maybe a plastic. In order to avoid going through this process, we look at it. Okay, what can we reuse the thing to make? You know, so for instance, a jerry can. You know, this yellow jerry can. I don't know how it's called in some of the country, but we know it as jerry cans here. You know, some of mm -hmm. them are broken. It's a gallon. It's the yellow ga oil gallons. So exactly. we could cut it. We could cut it into two, and then uh, paint it very nice to be more aesthetically good. Then we use some wood or other stuff, or so maybe we look for some hinges, and then we could make a toolbox out of it. You know, which we can use. Right, so you see that we didn't pass through the shredding, the heating, the molding, all those processes are cut off, but we've still re recycled that plastic, right? And also sometimes yeah. we get these bottles where people throw away. We cut some of them into various shapes and then we use them to make other other things too as well. You get it. So, and also sachet water, sachet water bottles like this, uh, we 
so mostly combine them with fabrics and then we sew school bags and I mean sandals and other stuff. Yeah. So we could also explore some of these options and then to see that also help in starting small, you know, because you don't have a lot of resources to buy machines and all of that. Yeah, so that's one option you can also explore to see. Yeah, very, very nice point. Um, and actually, maybe just to share, we we do this kind of um, repurposing. Um, I don't know if you can call it recycling since there is no processing, uh, but that's just terminology. Um, what we do, and that makes me think that we didn't do the round of presentation at the beginning. Sorry for it. I was so excited to get it right into the questions. Um, but in WellLab, we, we already use the... Um, water plastic so we have water in those plastic sachets here and uh, we use them to to build like a cover for the car or to do like kits so basically we sew them together and then we can use it to, for for doing new stuff like the school bag for kids and so on so i think that's the beginning of yeah of uh, reusing the plastic repurposing them Thanks. And um, on, on the question of the 3D filament, I don't know if uh, you guys have experience in that. Does anybody do yeah. it? Yeah, I wanted to share um, because maybe not everybody is able to check the chat um, and uh, that these machines are currently, I'm not sure whether precious plastic has some of those, um, but there are lots of people currently experimenting with this and Saad also mentioned that he did one specific design uh, that he only recommends for educational uh, purpose and for learning, uh, but still that's a good, good reason to do it, um, where you don't need to shred anymore the plastic bottles, uh, but you can directly uh, from parts of it. Uh, and if they are very like clean and everything um, and very like not not too crunchy, um, create the filament. Um, and yeah, there's lots of development in this part of uh, plastic recycling, I would say. Also because it reduces the amount of microplastic you produce because shreddering is really like the worst thing, I would say. <laughs> uh, and we should avoid it uh, whenever it's possible. Um, but yeah, uh, or make it even better uh, through other technologies, of course. Uh, so that was one, one thing I wanted to share. And But unfortunately, we are still waiting for the design that the uh, people from Ukraine from the Toloka project uh, created. Uh, they only shared pictures so far and they are still in the experimentation mode, but they said um, that they had way less, like if you melt the plastic from a, from a strip, um, then you often have air like included in, uh, in the strip. And so this is something they want to avoid as much as possible, of course. Uh, so they are experimenting a lot, uh, but I hope they would share very soon what they created. Um, but the other super interesting uh, thing that Precious Plastic has for many years now is the part about like flat plastics where like uh, shopping bags and many other things, but I don't know how much you're like collecting these kind of plastics are then melted into a sheet. Again, also not too much shred or like no shreddering um, and no, no, not so much microplastic produced. So I think that's also super cool. Um, but yeah, of course, the, the um, what you can do with the plastic is then quite limited um, in terms of creating new things. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing that I wanted to share. Yeah, thanks. Yes, that's also so. So I can see that there is a lot of work and research oh. going on uh, in the maker community, and it's really uh, enriching. I'm seeing uh, checking the time. We have four minutes left. Uh, there is one machine we didn't talk about. Is the sheet press? I don't know. Um, Norris and Antonio, did you build those one as well? I could see it on the Precious Plastic website, and uh, I was not quite sure how this works. The, the sheet on the automobile, I know, but this one, maybe you have some experience. experience. Sorry, we didn't build it yet, but I see one uh, in Geneva. 
uh, there is a fab lab in Geneva. I can't remember the name on laugh or something, the name of the space. It was a fab lab. I can share the contact with of them with you, of course. Uh, they make the big one, the sheet, uh, sheet mold. Actually, I think it needs some sort of consistent and stable uh, temperature, all the part, because it's, uh, we are talking about a, a big uh, mass of plastic to be molded within a very uh, thin or very flat uh, design, which need to keep the flow of the plastic. So I can share with you their contact. And also, of course, I recommend the British Plastic website uh, for that reason also. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Fadia. No, I just wanted to say if we can stay for five minutes longer, uh, my, we just have here the amazing person from the Fab Lab in uh, Portugal who was sharing about precious plastic and he was wondering if he can uh, join uh, very briefly, I thought maybe this is a good idea to just connect you maybe for the future. Would that be okay? Five minutes more? Okay, okay. great. I'll just make him take my seat. One second. And he can even speak in Portuguese. Ah, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> um, no fallo Portuguese. Is it correct? I don't no, know. Well, it's much better than my Yoruba. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, yes, again. I have Miguel with me here. Hi. Uh, maybe, Miguel, you can introduce yourself. And just to say briefly, both of us are in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, attending VOCA, which is a seminar uh, that is collecting so many great makerspaces in Europe. And we are currently in one big uh, uh, makerspace called the Rogue uh, Center. So, Miguel, please introduce yourself. And just to say, everyone here is uh, working with precious plastic, or most of people in different places. Okay. Hello, my name is Miguel. I'm uh, from uh, Portugal, Oporto city. And uh, since uh, 2016, uh, our uh, one of uh, our members, um, João Leão, uh, brought uh, new the, the project with uh, Dave Atkins uh, in the beginnings of the, the project and uh, start to, to try the, the, the machine. And uh, the first one, it was the uh, it built the, the, it was the extruder um, with the simple uh, motor from uh, the car, the cleaning uh, window uh, motor, and three uh, D print some parts and uh, try the, the concept, and then uh, in port bring the project to to Portugal and start to to build the machines and try on. Uh, since then, we we uh, continue to to develop uh, some uh, projects with the, the the those machines and the, the community. Uh, now we build uh, we build and sell the the, the machines, um, and we kind of um, upgrade or the, make some uh, adjustments to to be more. Um, First, uh, we try to put them more easily to transport, uh, to use in the, the a bench uh, or a table. Uh, so without the, the furniture that uh, goes around the, the machine and also to be safe because here in, in Portugal for some institution, they need that the machines have the C, he, that is a, a, pro, a protocol to, to safety and to use the, them uh, with the, the community or schools or institutions. So we are developing some um, uh, protection for the moving parts and uh, for example, the shredder to, don't allow the, to put your hand near the blades, the, those security parts. Then uh, we have a community that want to try 
and make um, stuff uh, with the, the leftovers of uh, the industry or the for some project some material that uh, they gather and uh, so we have the machines in our uh, workshop uh, we gather the the waste and uh, we also make the the environmental uh, education with the schools to with the machines and the hands on experience to see the for example with the, the bottles the cups the the bottle bottle uh, the covers for the bottle the, co the covers for the bottles the, they kept uh, at home and they bring the, those to the the place they shredder and then they use uh, usually the injector to to make the veneers and they see all the process uh, hands on uh, in front of them uh, to see that uh, they they can do uh, something with the, the less over the, with the, the plastic that they they gather so this is a, a way of uh, doing things can, and we can produce uh, things to even for for um, be a, a rent so to to buy to sell and have a shop with the design um, and the improve and the a value uh, usually we try to tell a story to because the value of the plastic is not so much because it is the why we have so many plastic because the plastic is too cheap uh, and uh, the the way to to make value of this cheap material is to tell the story and the people are um, uh, they are more sensitive for this story. Uh, if you tell that this plastic came from some waste or from the sea or from the, the boxes that were broken in the markets or something, and then you, you can you sell not only the thing, but the, the history, the na narrative that you, you, you can uh, show. And uh, I think people are more concerned with this and uh, are um, more uh, engaged uh, with the, these uh, issues. So it's one of the things. The other is the, the education that uh, we think is very important, mm -hmm. even for adults that don't know what uh, goes uh, on when you put the the plastic in the yellow box or the garbage, uh, garbage and they they don't know that the the, the, the plastic have types the that some could are better for recycling or not so all this story we use the machines because it is very um, uh near it's very uh easily to to easy to show and to understand the process that the, the industry makes is the same but uh, in front of them is uh, better the than to speak about the environment or the problem of plastic there is the uh, a way more efficient in our perspective by our experience nice Thanks a lot will, for sharing. Yeah. I will I'll ask Miguel if he would like to be added to our WhatsApp uh, precious plastic group. And I think maybe it would be interesting if you can share more uh, on how you work with your yeah. community because Yawo and Togo is now currently working with exactly something similar, a project that will be implemented, educating the community, but also building the machines mm -hmm. and producing uh, uh, products that are valuable. So, yeah. Exactly. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, happy to have you on board. We'll come back with a lot of questions uh, for sure. Yeah. Already, I think that's um, one hour now and a bit more. Thank you all. Uh, it was really informative. Um, we are really grateful. I think I'm going to share that with uh, my community. 
and we answer a lot of questions we are brainstorming about. It's it's really one hour, but it's a lot for us. Uh, thank you again, everybody. Um, I don't know if you have some last words, um, Antonio and Norris. Th that lasts for today, but be sure I'll contact you. <laughs> That's not last. To share the, um, the, uh, to yes, okay, <laughs> thanks. Happy to share and to keep in contact. And I propose that now that I'm designing malls, make we can make a repository with the malls we are designing so we could share the recipes and all that. So I, I will set up a repository for that. That would be great. Yeah. Ricardo? No, I said super. I love your repositories, you know? And Miguel, você pode falar em português. Fica à vontade, cara. Sim. Oh! <laughs> you know, ah, um, um português. Quase brasileiro. Quase português. português. Um português. <laughs> Lato. É bom. isso. Sim. Que bom. Mas estás a onda? Mas sei, ó. Maceió, Brasil. Maceió. <laughs> bye bye, people. Enjoy the rest of your days. Enjoy the rest Thank of the day. day. Thank, you. Thank you for Thank the you great everyone. session. Thank you bye. for the opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.